Hello guys, welcome to Salesforce Predator. In this channel, we discuss about various concepts and technologies in Salesforce. This video is part of Lightning Web Component series. If you want to watch other videos of LWC or any other concepts in Salesforce, do visit the channel. You can consider this video as part two of a previous video where we have learned about the one-way winding in LWC. Now here, we'll go into more details to see how we can work with Salesforce objects and fields using one-way binding in LWC. Okay, so what I am going to do is I'll uh, bind the user inputs to Salesforce object fields and then insert that record into database. Okay, so for that uh, we are going to use our custom object which I have created in our Salesforce org. So it's nothing but a player object and we are going to use some of the fields of that objects also. Okay, so let's go to VS code and we'll create a lightning component, lightning web component. I'll name it as create player data. Okay. And place it in LWC direct. So the component is created. We declare a track variable for our Salesforce object. Okay, now in our HTML file, what we'll do is uh, we'll create some lightning inputs. Type equals to text. First name field so value equals to here check first name Similarly, we'll create some more lightning inputs. Okay. This would be last name. This will be number data type, and this will be again number data type. So here it will be age. Career goals, okay. We'll check the API name of fields. Okay. And again, I'll create a lightning button on click of which I'll create my object record.
we'll bind it to a method let's say save here we'll save the changes and we'll go to javascript and declare this method right now we'll keep it empty okay now in the previous video we have learned that whatever user input uh, whatever user will uh, write in this input field it will not be directly binded to this uh, attribute the value attribute why because there is no uh, two way binding over here we have to handle this manually only using the events so uh, what we are going to do we are going to write an on change method and then we'll bind the user input to this attribute but uh, in the previous examples there was only a uh, one lightning input now here we have more than one lightning inputs like four lightning inputs so are we going to write on change methods separately for all these inputs no so what we are going to do is we will write a single on change method and then uh, using event dot target and the data set attributes of html will uh, find the corresponding input and its attributes okay so let me write on change method for all this Change equal to say set clear data and this will be common for all these lightning inputs. Define this in JavaScript. Okay, now we'll close the lightning button and we'll save our changes. Now we know uh, using event.target we can get the lightning input for which the change has occurred right but to which field we need to bind that particular user input we don't know that right so how will we achieve that we'll use the data set properties of html right so what i'm going to do is i'll create one more property here and i'll put the api name of field over here right Now this is very important point uh, just observe how we will uh, bind the corresponding user input to its corresponding field okay so on change will get the user input where the change has occurred so target equal to this dot player object of which field so it is nothing but target element dot data set dot field name okay this is nothing but this attribute we are accessing equal to target element dot value okay so using this event dot target we'll get which user input uh, for which user input user has entered the value or 
for which user input change has occurred and then uh, we'll get the api name of that particular field to which we will bind that user input and then uh, we'll assign the target element of value that is the value ch the changed value that to that particular field in our player object right now we are going to write logic for saving object into database so for that we need to create an apex class okay create your data What we will receive over here is player object. And here we'll insert that player object. Okay. Next thing we'll import this method and method into our uh, javascript file so import create here let's say apex from at the rate salesforce at the rate salesforce app slash apex slash class name dot method name okay this has to be a single code now in the save player method uh, so we are calling this save player on click of submit button so on the save player method I'll make an imperative call to apex method to create our player object. Okay, so create player apex. Dot. this create player apex will pass player object so player object this dot result so we'll take this down Okay. 
Error of point. This we don't need this. Let's check the syntax. Uh, save player. Then we have call to an FX method. We are passing a parameter, and then we are using this promise for this apex imperative call okay so let's check this oh okay. so before uh, deploying this into salesforce org we need to include this target so that we can include our component into the record page we'll be using this into a player object record page Let's deploy this to our Salesforce org. We have saved our Apex method here. Yeah. Let's go to player object. Yeah, so this is player object. We'll edit the page and add our lightning web component into this uh, record page. Okay. Create player data. So this is our component. We'll save the changes. We'll go back to the record page. Yeah, so we can see our lightning web component over here, right? We have four fields, first name, last name, age, and career goal. And we have this submit button, right? So we'll enter the data. Test, let's say 25, and let's say 500 career goals. If I click on this submit button, I should get the alert. Yeah, so we are getting this alert player created successfully. That means we should be able to see our player object record so let's go into the player object so open this record yeah so this is the record which we have created right now okay so guys we'll wrap up this video here and in the next video we will go through very important concept that is validity attribute and how we can handle ui validation message and errors for user input in lwc okay so thank you guys please subscribe to this channel and do not forget to watch next video